The Arizona Cardinals could not do bleep. Never mind. Never mind. Hey, listen. I think most of you know this is a huge Arizona Cardinals house. Nobody has banged the drum louder or harder for the Cardinals than yours truly. I've been on this team for a while now and took it to a whole new level this year. And then the bottom fell out completely. They started 7-0. and They got to 10-2. and They were the best team in the NFL. They were so good, they were winning games with Colt McCoy at quarterback. Then they imploded in the most epic fashion ever. They lost four of their last five heading into the playoffs. Then they got humiliated 34 to 11 last night. I hate to say it. 34. To 11. 34. I hate to say it. I really do. But the more things change, the more they do stay exactly the same. Arizona imploded again. They were ill prepared again. The moment. And the stage was just too big for them. There's no getting around it. I'll admit it. When they were 7-0, and when they were 10-2, and I thought they were legit. I thought this was their season. I thought Kyler Murray was the MVP. I was wrong. Wrong. They have to own this catastrophe, and I have to own how hard I honked these guys this season. And don't get it twisted. That was not just one bad night. That was six bad weeks. Six really bad weeks. Down the stretch, they got blown out by Detroit. They lost to Seattle. Two teams whose seasons had ended months earlier. And the Cardinals lost to them. Win those games, you win the division. Lose those games, and then you've got to go on the road to start the playoffs. And then you get curb stomped in L.A. They went from looking like the best team in the league to looking like they did not belong in the playoffs. They looked... And played like a seven seed. You know, just like those other slugs that had no business being in the playoffs and proved it the second they hit the field for Super Wild Card Weekend. No names mentioned. Steelers. Eagles. Pressure bursts pipes. The Cardinals were spraying all over the place in the first half. I mean, what a complete and thorough disaster. That whole, we didn't have any playoff experience rap also does not hold water either. Neither did the Bengals, and they advanced. The Cardinals looked like they were caught in the headlights. And instead of doing something about it, they froze. And then they got run over, backed over, and ultimately dragged by an 18-wheeler wearing blue and gold. At one point, the Rams were out gaining the cards 163 to negative 4. Another milestone was when the Cards had run 15 plays for minus one total yards. The Rams were up 21-0 before the Cards picked up their first down. Like, how the hell could a team that looked so good several weeks back play that horribly last night? Borderline erotic if you're a Rams fan. Borderline erotic. Borderline unwatchable if you're anybody else. Now, if you know this show... You know what I think about Kyler Murray. You know that I think that he is one of one. I think he's one of the most unique and dynamic athletes I've ever seen. Literally, ever. A guy who looked like he was going to rip the MVP award at the halfway point of this season. But he wasn't any of that last night. He wasn't anything at all last night, but frankly, awful. Odell Beckham Jr. had a better night passing it than Kyler Murray. The Carson Wentz comparisons were flying around Twitter, and they were painful, but they were accurate. Like, that might have been the worst pick six I've ever seen, and certainly at the worst possible time. Like, I know you're trying to make something happen. I know you're trying to kickstart the offense. I know you're at least trying to avoid a safety, (laughs) but you can't do that. You simply can't do that. You simply cannot do that. Don't do that. Wentz himself cannot believe how terrible that decision was. Now, I know the Rams' pass rush is nasty, but you got to know that going in, right? And it seemed like Murray either didn't know that or wasn't prepared for it because they weren't just in his face, they were in his head. And I know the broadcast crew made a point of saying that Kyler Murray, according to the coaches, had spent more time in the facility this week than at any point ever, which makes the whole thing even more bewildering. Like, I know the cards didn't have DeAndre Hopkins, 
but they haven't had DeAndre Hopkins for quite some time now. That was not a new development. That was something they had been trying to deal with, and in the end, they really couldn't. Now, that's not to say that Kyler Murray is a bust or a failure. He's neither of those things. But what he just got was an awful taste of playoff medicine. And to paraphrase a legendary quote, it tastes like a tire and it goes down like peanut butter. Reaching the playoffs is a success, but there is no glory in reaching the playoffs and then puking all over yourselves once you get there. Believe me, the Rams knew that. They went into last night knowing they had to win. Had to. Not just to advance, but to justify everything. Remember, we talked about this all season long. The Rams were all bleeping in. Every single chip to the center of the table. Everything they had to the center of the table. I mean, the deed to the house, the car keys, the cell phone, every chip. Everything to the center of the table. You can't bring in Matthew Stafford, Vaughn Miller, Odell Beckham Jr., and then get bounced at home in the first round. L.A. knew that. And then L.A. went out, and they played like that. They played like the Rams that everybody had been expecting to see in the postseason. Weapons all over the field, mixing the pass and run, Sony Michelle pounding it. And I'll never not be amazed by the fact that Cam Akers is out there roughly a minute or two after shredding his Achilles And he had 95 yards from scrimmage. And how about Odell Beckham Jr.? Got to give it to the guy. Have to. Had a nice game. Another nice game. And this guy's just getting better and better and better and stronger. The pass rush got after Kyler Murray. Matthew Stafford made plays. Stafford did what he had to do to advance. All right? Why don't we talk about Stafford for a minute? You want to talk about pressure. You want to talk about a guy who had to have it. Now, I'm not saying that Stafford went legend last night. And Stafford is going to have to do more to beat Tampa Bay. But they didn't need him to do any more than he did last night. He did what he had to do, but nobody needed it worse than Stafford. The Rams gave up a ton to get him. They bet the house on this dude. And I'm not saying that one playoff win over an Arizona team that just crapped the bed secures his legacy. However, a playoff loss at home. Given all the weapons he had around him and given what was at stake, that would have wrecked this guy's legacy for sure. As much heat as Kyler Murray is getting today, and he deserves it, just go ahead and double that. No, triple that for Stafford if he doesn't get it done and the Rams get knocked out in their own house in the first round. So they absolutely had to have that game last night, and Stafford himself needed it even more. Credit to Stafford. He got the monkey off his back, at least for a week. All right, I'm not saying that that win last night justifies everything they've done. I'm not saying that win last night clears Stafford. It bought them all another week. But they had to have it, and they got it done. Credit for that. As for the cards, it is going to be a long, nasty offseason where they're going to have to do some serious soul-searching. All of them but especially their head coach and their franchise quarterback. Because, and I say this as somebody who's got great respect for that team, I say this as somebody who's got great respect for that organization, but they could not have looked any less prepared or been humiliated any worse than they were last night. And unfortunately for them, the entire bleeping world saw it on the big stage. And yeah, that hurt me as much as it hurt them. But it hurt me to have to watch that especially given how hard I went for them. And I bought it. I'm not going to take it back, and I'm not going to apologize for it. At 7-0, they look like that team. At 10-2, they look like that team. It looked like their year. And they crash catastrophically. Rams, on to the next game. And now we're on to the divisional round, which is awesome because, frankly, the super wild card round was kind of crappy. But now we're on to the divisional round where everybody who's still in it has got a legitimate look at it. Everybody. 1-800-636-8686. All right, so in addition to that, some other things I want to talk about. You know, it's been about 36 hours, and I've had some some time to think about it. I actually sleep on it twice. And I I still can't stop laughing about Mike McCarthy and the way that Cowboys game ended. 36 hours later... It's every bit as hilarious as when I saw it. And in fact, even better. It's getting better. It's aging really well. 
I want to talk about that some more. I mentioned at the very top the Manning cast. It was loud. I understand why Peyton did what he did and said what he said. That place was loud. It's no wonder. I mean, you can see everybody who worked that game. The announcers down the field, the Manning cast, they couldn't hear themselves very clearly. So I want to talk about the Mannings and the fact that all good things got to come to an end, including those two. They'll be back, but no time soon. Hate to say this, and when I say I hate to say this, I mean I really hate to say this, but Kyrie is at it again. He's at his absolute kyrie I've got an update. Something I meant to get to yesterday, but we were so caught up in what went down over the weekend, I did not get to the Bengals and the fact that they advanced. And I do want to talk about that too. What do you want to hit on? Open phones in hour number one. There's not a single reason why you shouldn't take your shot. Take your shot. Phone lines are open. There are a million good things to talk about. one 636 8686 Let me check some reaction. Dear Romy, thank you for supporting the cards all year. Coach Dingleberry just never adjusted the offense at all. NFL is all about adjusting. Having Kyler in shotgun 99% of the time was not working. Wake up, dude. Wake up. War on the Suns, beating Phoenix. Yeah, they're going to have some really difficult questions to answer. I'm not saying you blow it up. I'm not saying you blow the coach out. I'm not saying that Kyler's not still the guy. But that can't happen, honestly. It's one thing to get beat, but it's one thing to implode the way they did coming in. And that was not a one-off. That was not one bad night. That was not just, ah, you know, we got caught in the headlights on the big stage. They had been playing terribly for weeks. They went into the postseason looking terribly, and then it looked even worse once they got there. There's going to be some serious soul searching. I can only imagine what Steve Kimes thinking right about now and how he's going to go about analyzing this and trying to fix it. And he will. He will. Knowing him, he will be very aggressive, very analytical. But I don't think there's an easy solution here. I will tell you this. Blowing it all up is not the answer. But running it back the way they did last year to this year and doing it again next year, that absolutely is not the answer. This says, Wild Card Weekend had all of the buildup of a first date with a guaranteed wrestling match. It ended with her ordering the lobster and dropping the, I have a headache after dinner. Give me my lobster back and give me my weekend back. Give me back my... Ron in Colorado, you know, I would love to sit here and say, come on, Ron. Take it easy, Ron. How is bonus football a bad thing, Ron? But notice I'm not saying any of that. There was a lot of crappy football over the weekend. Come to find out, more is not better necessarily. At least it was not last weekend. There was a lot of really non-competitive football. It's about to get much better. Now everybody who belongs is in it. Not everybody belonged in a super wild card weekend, obviously. Steelers, credit for finding a way to get in, didn't belong. Eagles... Credit for finding a way to get in. Didn't belong. Hate to say this. Arizona, credit for finding a way. Did not belong. I mean, I'd love to make an, a counter argument, but you saw what they did last night. Blown the hell out. Jaime, I am so very sad that the exceptionally handsome Cliff Kingsbury failed yet again. Go figure. Hiring a below average college head coach with no success didn't work out. Who would have thought? War substance over style, Stephen S.A. Yeah, except that they were 7-0. and Except that they were 10-2. and Except that they look like the team to beat in the NFC. But then again, I can't say that any of this is unfair now. Because all we really care about is how you finish, not how you're playing in the midseason. S.A. Sports Honk. Hey, Jim, you think Stafford was under pressure? What about that pressure his helmet was under? Sincerely, James Kelly. Hashtag fat face. Fat. We're not doing that. The thing is, Stafford was under immense pressure. Like legacy pressure. Career pressure. Immense pressure. He knew it. They knew it. They all were under pressure. 
And the best thing that could have happened was they jumped on Arizona early on. And they had a run game that was established. That took a lot of pressure off him. And then he turned it loose. He let it rip. And what he did was enough.